Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's look for my 31 faces of Halloween is a fortune teller. Now I have done a fortune teller look. I did one last year, but I thought this would just be fun. I've always wanted to do something gory. I had this ping pong ball that just an, looks like an eyeball. So I thought why not make it look like a third eye sort of thing, but I wanted to put it on my chest and set up my forehead. I just wanted to make it a little bit different. I went with red, purple, and gold for this look, and I really had fun with it. It's definitely more of a simple type of look. It's, I mean, it's a little, it's got a little something going on, but it's super glam, super simple, and you can totally do without the eyeball. You could just do the face makeup. This would be difficult to wear to a Halloween party, though. I'm not going to lie, because it would get everywhere, so maybe leave out the black fingertips and just get some black nails. Get your nails did, you know? And make sure you're subscribed to my channel to see all of my Halloween looks that I'm going to be doing this month. And check back on my channel if you haven't seen any of my other looks because I'm doing 31 looks this month and this is one of them. If you guys would like to see how I created this look then please keep watching. Go ahead and put your wig on. And I'm taking this ping pong ball that I got from the Halloween store last year, and this is going to be our third eye in the middle of our chest. I'm also using this liquid latex, which is actually Mayron Makeup's liquid latex. It's just rebottled. Then using Ben Nye Thick Blood today to really make that gory effect. You're going to need some sponges, some Q-tips, you know, things to apply all this nasty stuff with. And we're going to be using paper towels today to create that skin-like effect. We're going to start tearing up our paper towel, do a little dance first, of course, and just tear up your paper towel into little tiny pieces. They don't have to be perfect. Some can be longer, some can be shorter. Kind of map out where you want the eyeball to be at. I put it right in my little hole that you have in between your collarbones. I don't know what that's called, but go ahead and lay down a little bit of latex, set the eyeball there, and then lay down more latex. Um, and then put some paper towels around it and cover those paper towels in more latex and just keep layering it Going back and forth with the latex and the paper towels I like to do the sides of the eyeball first to make it be able to stand up on its own That way I can work around it So you want to have some, some like stability for it before you start really working around the whole thing I'm just using a q-tip to apply the latex. I don't want to ruin any of my brushes you can use a brush if you want to, like if you buy a special brush just for the latex, but you probably will have to throw it away. Latex dries really quickly and it gets really gumpy and hard, so. And just keep going back and forth and make sure you're putting the latex onto the eyeball and some paper towels onto the eyeball as well. And kind of making it look like your skin has grown over this eyeball, if that makes sense. And just keep adding more and more paper towels pieces of paper towels. You really want it to be a smooth transition from your skin onto the eyeball and you also want to make sure you kind of blend those paper towels into your skin so there's no harsh lines. So just keep adding latex and kind of like smoothing out from the paper towel onto your skin. There are like clear types of latex. I have a flesh colored latex so it will dry a little bit more orange. And while that's sitting, we're going to move on to our face. So I'm just priming my eyelid. We're going to be doing a really colorful kind of purple look today. I'm using my Pastel Goth palette from Kat Von D. And I'm just mainly using the purple shades. I'm starting with this more pinkish kind of purple. And I'm using it for my transition color on my eyes. I'm really not bringing it into the inner part of my eye. I'm more so leaving it on the outer corner of my eye. And blending it up and then I'm taking the darker purple from that palette and putting that more into my crease but also blending that out and I'm doing kind of a circular type of shape I'm not really turning it into a cat eye I'm not really doing anything fancy with it but I'm just leaving it on that outer part now taking my handy dandy 35c morphe palette I'm taking this kind of lavender bluish color and I'm really putting that onto the outer V of my eye and blending it in towards my crease somewhat Again, I'm really leaving that inner corner open from my eye. I'm taking the first brush we used with the first color and kind of blending everything out and making sure it's all, you know, a smooth transition. Taking my Star Crush Minerals eyeshadow pigment, this is in the color Audacious Plum. 
It's a super dark purple. I'm really, really deepening that outer V. And just keep blending that up into the brow bone area. I really wanted it to be a soft transition. And do the same for the other eye. And as you can see, I'm really doing kind of like a moon shaped effect. Now I'm taking my Black Bean Jumbo Eye Pencil from NYX and I'm taking a brush and packing that pencil onto my lid. The pencil is really creamy so it's easy to take a brush and just kind of like dip it onto the pencil and then put it on your lid, which I prefer. It has you use less product and it doesn't get too creasy or anything when you do it this way. I'm taking that up way above my crease line and then I'm packing black eyeshadow on top of it just to give it a nice setting kind of power that way it doesn't move anywhere and I'm blending that into the purple taking my LA splash diamond eyeliner this is in fool's gold so it's kind of like coppers black and gold all mixed together and I just put that right on top of the black the black basically just gave a base for this gold color to really enhance the shades and I'm just following that all the way around that whole black area I did. And I'm kind of blending it out into the purple so there's no harsh lines. Again, we don't want any harsh lines. Now that we've done both eyes, I'm priming my face. I'm keeping this NARS primer in my T-zone area where my problems mostly occur at. That's where I usually get shiny at and have pores, things like that. And then I'm picking my Hourglass Veil, Veil, however you pronounce it taking this primer and putting it on the other areas of my face because I tend to get dry in those areas. So I'm the type of person who mixes two primers together because it just works best for my skin. And today I'm using my good old Kat Von D Lock It Foundation. I am shade Light 46 Cool. It's a bit of a red kind of pink undertone. And I'm just placing that all over my skin with my Beauty Blender. I'm then taking my NARS Soft Matte Concealer and I'm putting that in the areas I want to highlight, like underneath my eyes, my chin, my forehead, my nose, Cupid's bow, and then I'm blending all of that out as well. I want to do it for a super full coverage look today, like I always do. I mean, come on, let's be honest. And then I'm setting everything with my Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. I'm bringing this purple down, so I'm basically doing the same steps we did for the upper eye, using the light purple in the Pastel Goth palette, the dark purple the darker purple from Star Crush Minerals, but I'm really kind of keeping it in a C shape going down below my eye. And I'm almost dragging it onto my cheekbone a little bit. Just making sure everything is nice and blended and it's really, really soft. And I want to make sure the lower and the upper eye connect. Then I'm taking my black pencil and I'm lining my waterline, my upper waterline and my lower waterline. And I'm just kind of smoking out the top lash line a little bit on the end there. Then taking some black shadow, I'm just smoking it out a little bit more on the bottom and just blending that black into the purple. And I'm not taking it all the way into the inner corner of my eye. I'm mainly leaving it on the outer parts and in the middle of the eye a little bit as well. Now I'm taking that purple shade and I'm really bringing it down onto my cheekbones as if it was highlighter, but it's purple. And I'm starting with the lighter shade first and we'll really intensify that later on. First, I wanted to go from, for some like really old school brows where they look like they just like draw a black line on top of their natural brow. Um, and I ended up liking it for a few minutes, but you'll see later on in the video that I kind of fill them in a little bit more. And I'm just using black paint to do this. Um. 
I then took some concealer and tried to conceal the hairs a little bit, but I ended up really hating it, so yeah. And just kind of blend everything together. If you do want to do that type of look, I suggest covering your brows with a glue stick and then drawing on top of them. It will look much better. I'm using my Makeup Forever 12 Color Flash Case, and I'm using the more neutral toned one. And we're going to start really defining this eye down here. I'm using blue because for the color wheel, blue and orange contrast each other. So if you use a blue toned paint and cover up all that orange, it's going to really neutralize that orange. Then I'm taking a very light shade that's a little bit lighter than my skin tone. I'm covering all that blue up and blending it all out into my skin. And then I'm taking my Mayron Paradise Paints, and I'm going to be creating some veins around the eye. I also lay down a very light pink on top of all that after I was done, just to kind of neutralize it and make it my skin tone, because I'm more of a cool-toned skin tone, not so warm. And you don't need to blend it all the way up onto the eyeball, because we're going to be putting blood there, so it's okay. Making the veins, I'm just using a really tiny brush with very light strokes, and I'm making sure I tap it out once I create the whole vein. That way it kind of blends and looks like it's under my skin. And you just want to do really light strokes. Think of tree roots. And here's where I filled in the brows the rest of the way. They're still not like on fleek, but I wanted them to look a little bit unnatural. So it was all good. Then back to the eyeball, I'm now taking my Kat Von D foundation, which is the skin tone that I am, and I'm just lightly going on top of all of this to neutralize the pink, the orange, to kind of hide some of the veins, to make them look a little bit more natural. And I'm just using my finger to kind of tap it out so there's no harsh lines. You want to make sure you totally color correct everything because the latex dries darker. Some latex dries lighter, so you still want to make sure you color correct. Now I'm just taking some yellow eyeshadow and I'm kind of packing it randomly around. We want to create kind of a bruising effect. Then I'm taking a dark purple shade. These are just shadows. And now I'm going back into my cream paints and I'm using the dark purple in there. And I'm really just going around randomly and kind of placing these everywhere. I'm just blending it out with a Q-tip. You can use a brush, but cream paints are really thick, so just be careful of that. I'm just kind of blended the dark purple in with the yellow a little bit. Now I'm taking it translucent setting powder and I'm putting that on top of the cream paints. One, to set them and two, to kind of blend them out and make them look again like they're underneath of the skin instead of paint sitting on top. And then randomly on the outer parts of it, I just put dab some of that dark purple everywhere and blended it somewhat. Now I'm taking my thick blood, which is sort of like scab blood, and I'm just putting it all over the eyeballs to make it look kind of gross. And I'm kind of making sure there's big chunks in some areas, making sure it's thinner in some areas. And I'm just really blending that blood out into the bruising effects we did and making sure it covers all that latex that's on top of the eyeball. You could also use, use like stage blood or liquid blood to make it runny and drippy and even more gross because thick blood does dry. Now I'm taking a light purple shade and I'm contouring my whole forehead and I'm bringing it down. And I'm contouring my shoulders a little bit or putting purple on my shoulders. And I do it on my jawline as well, just to kind of make it a cohesive look. It makes it look really ethereal as well. I thought it was really pretty. Now I'm taking this LA Splash Pro Artist Waterproof Body Art Liner. Let me tell you, this stuff is waterproof, okay? Warning. But I'm just creating these weird little vein effects. It doesn't have to be perfect, whatever. We're going to be taking our finger and blending it out. It just creates this like a crystal ball kind of looking effect where it looks like watercolor almost. Or like if you were to look into a crystal ball like that weird wavy kind of creamy cloudy look. These liquid liners are really really creamy. They're so easy to work with. I did it on my shoulders as well. And now I'm just creating those really detailed dots that I do. I'm doing it above my eyes and I even did it below my brows here in a few minutes. And then I'm bringing that purple down as if it was blush or a contour almost. I'm bringing it all the way down to my cheek and blending it in, making sure it cohesively goes in with the eyes and somewhat with the forehead as well. 
lashes. I'm doing some pretty dramatic lashes today. And while they're drying, or the lash glue is drying, I'm taking that same thick blood and I'm creating blood tears. Just did them kind of uneven. I did about three strokes underneath my eyes. I just wanted the whole look to be cohesive so there was blood on my face and there was purple going down my arms and not just purple on my face, blood on my chest. That was it. I wanted to bring it together somehow. Then go ahead and put your falsies on. You could even put falsies on the bottom. That would look really cool, but I just kept it on the top. And now I'm placing some jewels down. I'm just using my lash glue. I let it dry for like 10 seconds because I use a very light coat. And then I just place the gem right on top and hold it there for a second or two. And I decided to do red because it matched the blood and it matches my wig. Lips, I'm using a dark red bite color. I think it's 042, that's the shade. It's kind of like a cranberry red and I'm just lining my lips. And then I'm using my LA Splash Cosmetics Wickedly Divine Liquid Lipstick, which matches my look today. And this is in Wrath. It's a really pretty dark red shade with some metallic features to it. It's so beautiful though. These liquid lipsticks stay on forever. I do have a discount code. Use it if you want to. These lipsticks are perfect for Halloween parties. They ain't going nowhere. And then taking the same glitter liner we used on our lids. I'm just putting that right above my Cupid's bow. And I'm bringing it up like those little lines underneath of our nose right there. Just to bring some glitter somewhere else. Because why not? Then I'm taking some blood and just doing it on one corner of my mouth, just to kind of bring it together even more. Oh, I, I guess I did it on both the corners of my mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I'm painting the tips of my fingers black. It just kind of gives her a cool spooky effect when you take pictures and things like that. I wouldn't recommend doing it at a party, like I mentioned in the beginning. Maybe just paint your nails black or red or purple even, or whatever colors you do for your costume. Whatever works. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please stay tuned for all of my other Halloween looks. If you have not subscribed to me yet, please go do that so you can see all of my fun, spooky looks that I'm doing this season. Thanks so much for watching. I hope y'all learned something, and I'll see you soon. Bye.